Okay, so uh, this takes us to uh, the next uh, uh, case. And um, let's put uh, Biget, let's put you in the spotlight this time. And uh, uh, you've got this 45 year old lady uh, who's come to your clinic and uh, uh, these are her x-rays. What do you have to say about these uh, images? Uh, this is a plain radiograph and posterior view of the bright head and what appears to be the obvious deformity um, is protrusion of the acetabulum. Um, it appears to be a severe protrusion actually um, and established hip arthritis with narrow joint space. Okay, so what, what do you mean by protrusion and what do you know about it? Uh, protrusion is when the femoral head uh, goes beyond the uh, cohlers line uh, and it's, it has grades. I think this one is a severe one because it's more than 15 millimeters protrusion. Um, it's a condition that can happen primarily uh, like autopelvis or secondary to bone softening conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, um, post-traumatic, Marfan syndrome, Paget's disease, osteomalacia, um, a previous septic hip could also result in um, protrusion establishment. Okay. Yeah, so, so this lady is in your hip clinic. Uh, uh, because of her hip pain, uh, and as you did mention, she does have arthritic changes. So, um, what are your thoughts about management? Well, I would like just to know initially: has she had any trial of non-operative treatment? Because she has established arthritis, so the treatment is either non-operative, uh, symptomatic treatment, pain medication, and optimization with physiotherapy. If she has exploited all the non-operative measures and exhausted them. Uh, and, and that has failed to improve her symptoms, then we would offer her a total hip replacement. Okay, so, so yeah, so she has exhausted all these non-operative measures and she's with you today to discuss a hip replacement. So what are you now thinking of that hip replacement? What, are, what challenges are you expecting? Okay. What sort of hip replacement are you going to use? This is a complex case. It's a, it's a challenging case. So ideally, in, in real life scenario, I would refer her to a hip specialist who has experience in dealing with these cases. But I'm aware, if I were the experienced hip yes, surgeon... You are, you are, today you are the experienced hip surgeon. So there are a number of difficulties that we need to tackle. Basically, um, you need to put the hip back in the correct center of rotation, in the anatomic center of rotation, which means that you need to lateralize uh, the socket, the established socket, because it's medialized in the protrusion. And to do that, uh, you, you rely mainly on bone grafting and then sometimes you can use augments. I would offer her a hybrid hip replacement, um, uh, a cemented, uh, uh, sorry, I would offer her a hybrid hip replacement. I would use... Uh, so you use a hybrid, so you use an uncemented yeah. socket and you put bone graft, okay. Uh, why not use a cemented one and fill all of that cavity with cement then? Uh, well, there are some studies that say you can use cemented cups in those cases, but um, in a paper published in 2013 from Mayo Clinic, they found that the survivorship is better when you use an uncemented hip replacement. Yes, and I think you're referring to that study also that they found that um, when you restore the native hip, you get better uh, survivors also. Okay, so now, now she's on the table. Of, she's on the table. Of the, she's starting of to do the hip replacement. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yes, you're on the table uh, now and you're starting to do the hip replacement. So tell me what, uh, what's going through. What, tell me about the different steps and different precautions you're going to take in this case. This will not be a regular hip replacement. There are a number of difficulties that you're expecting to meet. Um, starting with your uh, uh, dislocation of the hip. It might not be easy and you might not be able to do it. So you, you need to be prepared to perform a neck cut in situ. Um, have a generous incision of the capsule. Uh, gives you better and a wide exposure. Um, it's very important also to template preoperatively for the limb length discrepancy uh, and to restore the appropriate offset and virgin. Uh, Due to the protrusion, the um, rim of the establum is usually causing an hourglass constriction around the femoral neck. So one needs to be very cautious during reaming, do prefer reaming to, to, to get rid of that excessive rim, and avoid excessive reaming medially because the floor is deficient. 
Um, I would be prepared with mortalized bone graft um, and a floor mesh. I might also use a shell from the femoral head to place it medially to hold my mortalized bone graft. Infection grafting started for the transfers of stabular ligament and working your way medially. Um, I would be very cautious because there is a high risk of sciatic nerve injury uh, in those cases. Uh, there is a current trend towards using cementless, as I've mentioned. However, uh, uh, rather than the press fit fixation, I would prefer line to line fixation. So I would add supplementary screws. That's uh, very good. Thank you. Uh, what do you think, Ahmed? What do I think about his answer? Uh, I think his answer was um, good. I think I'd give him a, a, a solid uh, six, um, maybe a seven. So he's, um, he interpreted the x-rays. Uh, he's aware, obviously, of the disease and the etiology and causing the protrusion and the classification. He touched on the classification as well. Uh, he's a safe surgeon. He's aware of the technical difficulties and he acknowledges the fact that this needs to be done by an experienced hip um, surgeon who does that in large volumes. But he knows uh, the general uh, uh, principles. So I think he covered most of the bases. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think a, a seven maybe. Yeah, I think I think more towards a seven, even if, uh, I don't know, maybe an eight. I mean, but, yeah, it depends on the examiner. But um, yeah, and I think he, he, he mentioned all the difficulties uh, and he had also proposed different solutions for the difficulties. He also touched on cemented versus uncemented and he even had evidence for it. So I think, I think with all that, I think he deserves an eight. Uh, uh, this is the paper uh, Begad was uh, referring to, uh, which is a famous uh, paper, one of the key papers you should have uh, knowledge uh, regards uh, to the FRCS exam, um, court 2013. And they found that the survivorship of cemented, uh, sorry, the, of the uncemented was better than the cemented. They also um, uh, found that um, the further away you are from the native hip center, the more likely you are uh, to develop a septic loosening. So I think they gave a number of 24% increased risk of aseptic loosening for every one millimeter of medial or lateral distance away from the native hip center. Okay, thank you.